What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So I did a poll on my Twitter account and on YouTube asking you guys if I should start a new jailbreak tutorial series covering how to do all of the amazing things you can do on a jailbroken PS4. And the majority of you guys voted for me to do that. So here we are. This is the first video in that series. And in this video, I wanted to cover something that I'm seeing a lot of complaints about from people after they first jailbreak their PS4 which is that they're not able to run any of their games. So for example, I've got Days Gone here. When I try and run this game, you can see I get cannot start application CE34224-5. Or if you run into another error that just says, hey, you need to update your firmware in order to, you know, in order to run this game. So this is really all about game updates because what we have here is we have a game that has the latest update installed so Days Gone version 1.81, which is the latest update for Days Gone, which doesn't actually run on 9.00. If you if you check the update by going to like a website like orbispatches.com, it can tell you that for 1.81, you need to be on firmware version 9.03. And obviously the jailbreak is, is for 9.00. So that's why you're not able to run a game if you've installed the latest update on it. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to run your games by installing an older update. Sometimes you only need one update older than the latest update in order for it to work. And we're going to use a homebrew app to do this called the Patch Installer, which is a very useful homebrew app that can allow you to install multiple different updates for your games. So it has a huge list of like pretty much every update for the game and you can just pick which one you want to install. And all you have to do is pick the one that you know does not require the latest firmware to run and you should be able to then run your games no problem. So before we do this we're going to go ahead and reset this back to the default game version so I'm going to uh, remove the disk for this game and then I'm just going to delete the game to get rid of the update and then I'm going to pop the disk back in so that we're reset back to 1.00. If you're on a digital game I'll show you how to remove the update later. But uh, just for quickness here, I'm just going to do this so that we can reinstall this game. And if you end up with it trying to download the latest update, make sure you delete it so it does not download the latest update. As you can see, this game is now back to 1.00. Okay, so while this game is reinstalling, what I'm going to do is show you how to install the patch installer. So first thing we need to do is switch on over to our computer and grab yourself a USB drive. And what we're going to do is make sure that USB drive is formatted in XFAT or FAT32 format. One of those two formats. If it's not, if it's an NTFS or something, then you can right click and reformat the drive. Selecting XFAT as the file system or FAT32 and then click start to reformat it. Obviously make sure you back up any data that was on the drive beforehand, otherwise you could end up losing it. And what we're going to do is get this patch installer app, which you can get from a website known as orbispatches.com. So if you head to orbispatches.com, go to patch installer, there'll be a link to it down in the video description. You're just going to download the patch installer right here. So once you have it installed, copy it over to the root of your USB drive and then eject the drive and plug it into your PS4. Okay, and as this is installing, what we're gonna do is make sure you've obviously ran the jailbreak. So make sure you've gone onto your exploit host, whichever one you want to use, and that you've actually gone onto, you know, gold hen and actually ran the gold hen payload so that you're able to jailbreak the PS4. So make sure you've done that. You know, if you don't know how to do any of that stuff, obviously watch my previous tutorial, my full jailbreak tutorial. Uh, where I have gone through in detail and showed you guys how to jailbreak the PS4 on 9.00 from start to finish with all the relevant information you need. So that's why I'm not going to go back and, you know, cover stuff I've already covered in previous videos. So run Gold Hen and you should be good to go. Okay, so once the USB drive is plugged back into the PS4, we're going to head to settings. We're going to scroll down to the debug settings. We're going to go to game package installer and we're going to install the package file from the USB drive. And there we go. So now we've got it back right here, patch installer. What I'm going to do is add a folder and we'll just call this folder uh, homebrew. So it will be our homebrew folder. I'll just put all the homebrew apps in that folder in future. 
and we'll go ahead and run the patch installer right here. So first things first, we get this nice little message saying thanks for using the patch installer and then we can go to the game itself. Now, if you still have the update installed because you have a digital version of the game installed, you should have an option in here to delete the currently installed patch and then that should get rid of the currently installed update so you can then install a different update. But what's cool about this is as you can see, you've got all these different game updates that you can install for the game, but it tells you which update will not work on your firmware version. So you can see 1.81, the update that we did have installed on this game originally is not going to work. You can see the red icon next to it because it requires a higher firmware 9.03 in order for this update to work. So, so all I have to do is select the last green icon in the list. So 1.80 in this case, and it should work absolutely fine. So all I have to do is select this option. Now, one thing that will happen here, if I go to install, you can see an error occurred during this operation. The connection to PlayStation.net was denied. So you cannot be blocking the connections to Sony's servers in order to use this application because it's not actually downloading from a third party server. It's actually downloading the updates from Sony's servers, just like, you know, the latest update always downloads from Sony's servers. It's just that this has the links to all of the older updates on Sony servers that you can select. So we can't be blocking Sony servers. So if you are blocking Sony servers with the DNS addresses, just head into the settings, go to network, go to set up an internet connection, use whatever method you normally use, and then just use an easy setup. And then that will overwrite your DNS settings with the default ones. And then you should be able to connect to Sony servers now. So we'll just select 1.81 and continue installation. And as you can see, the patch was added to the downloads. And we can see if we go up here that we are now downloading update version 1.80 instead of version 1.81. And that should hopefully work once that successfully installs. All right, guys. So we are just about finished downloading the update here. We're at three, two, one, and the update has been successfully installed. So there we go, update installed, 1.80. Now what you want to do is make sure once you've installed all the updates that you want to install, make sure you re-block the connections to Sony servers because if you don't, then what will happen is the next time you boot the console up or something or you're, you're not looking, then your sneaky little PS4 will start trying to download the latest update again from Sony servers and then you'll be back to not being able to run your game. So once you're done updating to the correct update that will actually work on your PS4 firmware version, you're going to go back into your network settings, set up your internet connection using the method that you would normally use. Make sure you do a custom setup and then we'll do automatic IP, do not specify DHCP, a manual DNS setup. And then we're just going to enter one of those IP addresses that we did before. So, you know, 165.227.83. 145 and of course the other one is 192.241.221.79 you can add them in any order and then do next automatic mtu do not use proxy server and then we're good we're back to having the updates blocked again so that way we'll stay on update version 1.80 for days gone and I won't accidentally install 1.81 and then not being able to run my game again. So will it actually work? As you can see, we are on 1.80 now. So let's try and run it and see what happens here. Day's gone. And instead of getting that error message, you can see the game is running. There we go. There's no game version, but you can see there's challenges and new game plus. I wouldn't have those options if I was on the base version of the game. So you can see we are updated successfully to version 1.80 and the game is running. So that's basically all you have to do to get your games working and how to install older updates on your PS4. You just have to bear in mind that if you're not blocking Sony servers, then your PS4 is going to try and update all your games to the latest version. And that latest version might not work on your older firmware version 9.00. And that's why you get those errors when you're trying to launch the game. So you just need to use the patch installer to install an older update instead, one that will work on your firmware version, and then just block the connections to Sony servers afterwards so you don't accidentally end up installing the latest version again. It's that simple, guys. So hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. 
And stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to be going through how to install PS4 apps, so package files, uh, from your computer or your phone uh, remotely so that you don't have to use a USB stick every time you want to install an app on your PS4 because it's a bit awkward having to have two USB drives for 9.00, one for the hacked image to jailbreak the PS4 and then the other one to actually install your packages. So in the next video, I'm going to hopefully make it more convenient by showing you a, a few different ways that you can install package files over your network instead of having to, uh, you know, use a USB drive. So stay tuned for that one in the next video, probably tomorrow. So hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.